Okay, well, this is definitely wild. You know how they say one man's trash is another man's treasure. Mike Pelly, also known as Merman Mike, has been finding cool stuff under the sea for a while now. Okay, that's a saying my mother always uses. <laughs> uh, but get this, sometimes what he finds, he makes sure to find its original owner, too. All right. Merman Mike jo uh, joins us now, and there he is. First of all, Mike, you are amazingly branded, and we appreciate you being <laughs> on our show tonight, man. We're excited. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Oh. Yeah, listen, we, we're both excited to ask you a question, so I'm just going to blurt it out. What got you into deep sea exploring? Oh, I've always just had this super deep fascination for what lies under the water, and I've always wanted to get scuba certified. I was supposed to get scuba certi certified when I was 15. Unfortunately, I broke my collarbone. Mm. And I was watching these YouTube videos of some guys on the East Coast that did something similar in their rivers and lakes. And it kind of clicked to me that you didn't have to be right next to the ocean or be rich to go on vacations to go scuba diving. So within a month, I had this kind of fire within me, in me and I was in the water. And I just love it ever since. Okay, so a little birdie told us that you found a ring that was actually worth $17,000. And then you found its owner. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was an insane day. Um, I had a guy reach out to me because unfortunately he lost his ring over the side of a boat when he was dumping an ice chest. Huh. The ice chest slipped and brought the ring with it. He reached out to me and me and my girlfriend went out there. We were having some troubles to begin with. So they took off and they said, hey, thank you so much for coming out. We really appreciate it. If you do end up finding it, please give us a call. But, you know, we're not really expecting too much. So they took off. We were there for at least another hour, and we ended up finding it, FaceTimed them. It was an absolutely incredible thing. And then they actually surprised us when they came back by uh, donating a very large amount for me to get a metal detector to then help other people to get their rings back as well. So it was just this amazing kind of everybody got to help each other moment. Gosh, what kind is that a Super Bowl ring? That thing is huge. What kind of ring is that? Yeah, it was I was not expecting that was what I was gonna find because he didn't really tell me what I was looking for. He just said he lost a ring that was really important to him. And when I pulled that thing up out of the sand, my jaw dropped. <laughs> it looks so shiny too. Did it look like that right after you found it, or was that after a polish? Yeah, so the silt will actually kind of like preserve things because it will keep all the environment from brushing over it and it kind of just encases it in this little protective layer. So oftentimes the part that's in the silt will actually look a lot newer than what's ever outside of the silt. Mike, be honest here, be honest, okay? Did you ever consider telling them you didn't find the ring and just, <laughs> you know, maybe visiting a pawn shop on your way home? No, never? Not even for a second. All it's, right. <laughs> for me, there's... I've got too much of a conscience. I know my grandma's <laughs> looking down at me always. And it's that moment that I get to return it that I'm always looking for. Oh, you're a good guy. You're a good you guy. are. Yeah, we yeah. love that. So we want to know what's the spookiest thing uh, that you found underwater? I far a voodoo doll that was taped under, taped around a rock and at the bottom of the American River. That's the one. Oh, Whoa. my gosh. Wait, the voodoo it's doll a... was, ta <laughs> was taped to a rock? Did you find its original Yeah, my owner? girlfriend... My girlfriend did not want me bringing that one home, but um, it is. Oh, you got it. Right, right here oh, in man. the treasure room. Oh, my goodness. There it is. So someone, yeah, whoever, whoever made got... that didn't like the person who's representative in, in the voodoo doll, huh? Yeah, I was kind of hoping maybe I saved them from drowning in life or something like that. <laughs> but it was also another piece of trash. So my whole thing is I always get the trash out of the river as well. You can't just go for the treasure. You have to get the trash. Okay, so after you found it, did anything bad happen? Dare we ask? Good Dare question. we jinx you? Yes, about a week later. I still think it's coincidence, but my girlfriend definitely blames the voodoo doll. I actually ended up in a car accident that completely totaled my truck. I ended up having to get surgery on my shoulder. Oh my and uh, yeah, so when I found some voodoo jars a little bit later on down the road, she wouldn't let me bring those inside the house. Oh, They're in the garage no. right now. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I can't blame her. Listen, man, this is called Fox Weather Wild, okay? So we always have to have like a weather adjacent tie-in. So we want to know here, because we're weather nerds, uh, what, how does weather impact diving conditions? Like, uh, can you not dive in the rain? Does it ever get too hot? How do you plan around the weather? So 
Me, I'm usually fine. If it's raining a lot, that'll affect my visibility greatly down there. Like this last, I think it was last week and we had a 30 plus hour storm and I literally couldn't see my hand from here to here. And I went down for a second, realized it was completely unsafe and had to come back up. And then when it's super hot, those are actually some of my favorite days. It's a little bit less comfortable to get ready on. But once you're in the water, because so many people go out when it's hot out and they don't realize how cold the water is, that temperature change from when they go from hot to cold will shrink their fingers a little bit. And it oftentimes will give just enough room for some water to go in between the ring and the hand and it just shoots the ring right off. Oh, so that's yeah, good to know. A, yeah, so the shrinkage of the fingers is a huge problem. Huh. Okay, so tell us about some other cool finds that you've encountered. I found a 1908 Model T Ford wagon, or not wagon wheel, but to like one of the first uh, cars, and wow. it's all 12 wooden spokes that were Whoa. originally intact, and then we got it back to the boat ramp, and we had 10 wooden er, spokes still intact, but wow. I still think it's one of my coolest finds I've ever found. I gotta tell, where do you live, Mike? Where do you normally do this, this diving at? So I'm out of Citrus Heights, so pretty much uh, Lake Natoma, the American River are my hot spots, but I'm also willing to go travel a little bit out of my way to help other people get their valuables back as well. Listen, if you're ever diving uh, and you find a big treasure chest, just full of <laughs> gold and jewels, I lost that. Call uh, Nick. Yeah, that's mine, that's <laughs> mine. So make sure you return it to me, okay? Nobody else. Absolutely, you'll yeah. be the first I call. Yeah, and I forget where I lost it. It's somewhere on planet Earth. So if you ever find that, man. Don't, don't find out what it looks like or whatnot, but it had a lot of expensive things in there. Yeah, I just remember it was very shiny and heavy and yeah, it was worth a lot of money. So and Christmas is just around the corner now. <laughs> Mike, listen, you're truly one of the most interesting and unique people that I've ever talked to. You're doing awesome work, and you seem like a great guy. And uh, we, we're we rooting for you, and we want to talk to you again. Will you come back on Fox Weather Wild when you uh, find something else that's cool and new? Absolutely, and thank you guys so much for having me. This has been amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Mike.